Jeffrey Makubo, welcome. Great to have you in studio once again and appreciate your time to give us feedback as the former MMC of Finance uh, for the city of Joburg on the Auditor General's report. What is your interpretation of that report and concerns raised? Good morning, Oshina, and good morning to the viewers. It's good to be back in the studio of Joburg TV. Um, my interpretation of uh, the Auditor General's report um, is that, you know, it's an unqualified audit on our annual general financial statements. There are some issues raised, um, concerns raised, of course. Um, that's the job of the auditor to see whether, you know, everything is, is done good by the administration on our behalf. Um, there are issues raised on the laws, uh, compliance with laws and regulations, and of course on what we call predetermined objectives. However, on the overall, the finances of the city and the annual report of the city is very, very much positive for the residents of the city. Sure. Uh, I want to talk about some of the concerns that we raised specifically because we had these conversations with the MMC of Finance and the Mayor as well. The report pointed out that the extension of contracts, and this has always been a contentious issue, the procurement uh, and awarding of uh, contracts to service providers, uh, deviated from legal protocol. And I think the concern they raised was that he said it was not impractical to get competitive bids. How did this happen and what are, you, what are your views on that? Firstly, I think we need to understand what the role of council and what the role of administration is. The supply chain policy um, is passed by council and we are political custodians as councillors. Of course, we delegate that function to the mayor and the MMC of finance. However, the policy does say that there are three committees that are charged with um, um, procurement matters. is the bid specification committee, is the bid evaluation committee, and the bid evaluation committees. Now, what, what happens in the process is that sometimes these, these, these committees extend contracts and or do what we call deviations. Mm -hmm. Deviations are allowed by law section 36. However, there are, there are um, exclusions that the law says. If it's practical to go out on tender, please do it. Now, the administration only holds them accountable. They say, no, but sometimes um, we think that it's not practical because we are in that moment. Mm -hmm. But when the Auditor General looks back six months later, he says, but it was practical. But when we are in that moment and they explain to us that we did sit, the committee sat, the city manager, the group CFO, and all other people who are involved in, in procurement like legal, they say, okay, this thing is legal, it can go on. So sometimes it's really what the Auditor General says and what the administration says. For me, if the city got value, I am satisfied. Yeah. If the city got value, I am satisfied. As long as money was not lost, money was not stolen, then I am satisfied. Which is how we've been dealing with it. Just to check if city got value, but we thought, no, they're, they're, these people must, must comply at the end of the day. Okay. Another point raised by the Auditor General on the point of the awarding of contracts was that these contracts went through without declarations that the providers were not employees or family members. And this is very concerning because we know what is out there and what, what is out there in terms of perception of how contracts have been awarded. And the fact that this concern comes up, it alleges almost that this in fact is the truth, that these contracts were simply handed over to employees or to cadres. Again, let's put that in context. And I think it's a pity that um, you know the, the administration that's currently in charge of the city is presenting um, this, this issue raised by the Auditor General um, as a pervasive issue within, within uh, the city of Johannesburg. It's illegal for anyone who's an employee of the state, anyway, to do business with the state. Mm -hmm. It's illegal. But if somebody whose relative is in the employee of the city, there's a form called MBD form 4. They have to declare that my cousin is a nurse, my brother is a grass cutter in the cemetery, you know, but meanwhile somebody is, up, is, is tendering for catering, something unrelated. However, we say declare. Now, the Auditor General in his report says three employees in Johannesburg, I mean, three contracts were awarded to employees whose relatives, I mean, to, to some people whose, whose, whose relatives are employees of the city. Uh, not that directly people did business with the city. That's, mm -hmm. that's the essence of the, what the AG say. Three. And these people are in EMS and, and, and in, in health services. Sure. But he further says the city did not take necessary steps to ensure that business is not given to people whose relatives are in the employ of the state. 
And it's very clear if you look at the annual financial statements um, uh, in page 282 or something like that. It lists that we give, they gave business to a particular company and that person's mother works for, the director of that company's mother works for the city of Cape Town. So we did ask the Auditor General, how can you help us so that this does not happen? Mm -hmm. He says, no, I'm just bringing it to, 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 the, to the awareness of the reader of the financial statements. But there is none. There is none where an employee of Johannesburg got a contract in Johannesburg. There's mm -hmm. nothing like that. It's only how it was packaged in the media that uh, it sounded as if the cadres of the ANC gave uh, business to each other. But the truth is, if you read the Auditor General's report in detail, it will tell you exactly what has happened. At the last council meeting, that resolution was passed to have an open tender system in Johannesburg. Uh, the ANC came across as not being opposed to that. Do you think that would that is a part uh, solution to this perception that's out there around the bidding and tender award process in the city currently? We, we've always, in fact, if you look at my, our manifesto, we always said, look, let's let's open the adjudication part. However, in that last meeting, we stood up and proposed a further resolution to say the evaluation process must, go, must undergo a probity process of any tender above 5 million rents and anyone below the adjudication committee can choose whether the, the contracts will go through probity process. Because the evaluation process is not public. And the bid evaluation uh, committee recommends to the adjudication committee. Mm -hmm. So the adjudication committee sits there and says, of the 10 uh, bidders, we recommend Number one is X, number two is Y, and we've disqualified the eighth because blah, 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 blah. But no one knows whether the scores uh, given by the evaluation committee are valid or not. That's hence we said, no, 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 let's get probity to, to look at the evaluation process. We support this wholeheartedly, and we believe that uh, it adds to our fight against corruption and perceptions of corruption. Because remember, sure. perceptions of corruption can be real, uh, especially if they are peddled all the time and they are repeated all the time. So we think open tender system, the province is doing it, Ecuador is doing it, and we think Johannesburg. Um, uh, will, will this guarantee a greater sense of transparency? Well, I think it will do away with the perception that contracts are, are being given out to, con to cadres in the corners. Because people are going to be sitting in a meeting and saying, okay, there were eight mm -hmm. bidders, of course. Anyway, there's a report that comes to council that says there, be, there were 10 bidders. Um, eight were disqualified, uh, the tender went to the particular person. But what do you say, when the decision is made, the public will be there. And I think it will go a long way in, in dealing with that perception. That's great. I want to talk about one more point in the Auditor General's report. Mm. Uh, now, that I raised this with the MMC for Finance, Mr. Degada as well, um, around the comment that the Auditor General made uh, around the accuracy of uh, the financials. And he told me it comes down to competency of staff and it was just negligent errors that were really made. And he commented that not all the staff within the department are competent. And it's not a question of whether they just have matric or not, but it comes down to a question of competency. They were not material, material mistakes. They were accounting errors. Uh, what are your thoughts on that comment? Or what, uh, let me ask you this, what were your challenges as the MMC for finance when it, when it came to capacity within the department? I, I, I was part of hiring this group CFO, very competent chartered accountant. I was part of employing the group head of co-accounting. Uh, I found him in the city, he's a chartered accountant. Uh, we have a chartered accountant in group accounting. We, we have competent staff, budget office, we have competent staff at the senior level. The directors of finance in City Power is a chartered accountant. The director of finance in Johannesburg Water is a chartered accountant. So, so we have throughout the city what we think at least are competent people in finance. Mm -hmm. Now, he probably does not understand section 122 of, um, of the MFMA, which says if there are material misstatements in the financials, um, then you bring it to the attention of the reader. Now, what are material misstatements? There was a year when we knew that by the end of August, we would not have sorted out uh, certain billing issues, like um, in areas like Westbury, in areas like Bosmond. We, we, we use what you call the deemed provisions. We, we don't know how much water goes into a yard because mm. they don't want us to put meters. Communities were up in arms. 
So we assume that um, an average house uses X amount of water. So, so we, we have to do that calculation all the time to say what went in, what didn't go in, deep slot is the same thing, and all other areas. So, so, so we knew that at the end of August, when we have to submit financials to the Auditor General, that exercise will not have been done. So we said, okay, submit, but we know that we have to make a material adjustment to, to fairly state the numbers. So, so it, we knew that it's not, it's not a matter of competence. It's yeah. a matter of the process at that time. So, so, so now um, some material misstatements again came from water and from, from electricity consumption. And I don't think it's a matter of competence. It's, it's a matter of the system to get uh, billing right, to get uh, metering right, um, and in trying to correct all those numbers. Uh, unfortunately, you have to correct them by August. If, if they're not correct by August, you correct them on the 1st of September. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're still allowed, by the 30, 30 days up to, up to the end of September to, to, to adjust. However, they are called material mis uh, misstatements. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, worried that we don't have skills in the city. I think the way they are going, competent people will leave. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you cast aspersions on people who don't have to be in the city, who can do much better in the private sector, uh, mm -hmm. who are committed to saving the citizens of the city, and you paint, you paint them as incompetent. Um, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a travesty that you're going to lose good skills in the city. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a matter of skills. It's a matter of process that you have to fix. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And the feedback. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. But on the overall, as a summary, you know, Shina, I'm saying to the citizens of Johannesburg, the city's finances, at least during our tenure, were well run. They were solid. The credit rating agency supported us. Mm -hmm. And we think that uh, going forward, uh, we hope that the city as administration will keep the finances there for the benefit of the citizens. Let's not politic about it. Yeah. Let's ensure that the citizens of the city benefit.